How I was anyone there? And if someone could just post if they can hear me so I know the sound's working. <clears throat> Can any of you guys hear me? Thanks, Adrian. We'll wait, wait a few minutes and just see who else comes on and then I'll start getting into it. I guess we're all getting used to this uh, Facebook Live thing, eh? A um, bit new for us, but uh, we're using it uh, fairly regularly now, so um, yeah, hope you guys are thinking it's a good way to communicate. <clears throat> we'll probably uh, move to this format for running just uh, small meetings with in individual crews eventually. Um, uh, yeah, it could be uh, handy while we're all locked away. Uh, all right, um, got a hundred watching now, so we've got a fairly good audience. Anyone who hasn't caught up can, uh, uh, thanks Peter, we're at fires on the audio. Um, uh, anyone uh, who isn't on yet can sort of watch the replay of this, so it's not really going to matter if uh, I start on time, which is what I intended to do anyway. Uh, alrighty, um, look, just firstly, I'll just give a very brief wrap on just the last 48 hours or so. Uh, this time I'll start with, uh, with Qantas. Um, Qantas are being their usual difficult selves, just doing as they please, and a lot of that's going to really be covered in in the questions, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll be tackling that there mainly with the questions. Uh, Virgin, so um, we have two Virgin councillors on our executive guys, uh, Chris Tamblin and Mike Davies. Uh, they are both in with management as we speak, trying to trying to do what they can to uh, make the best out of this situation. And obviously, with their flights dropping to ten percent of their their normal network, it's going to be quite a healthy cut into the uh, into the workforce when the final numbers are figured out and just um, management have put something towards us that um, we're really trying to convince them is uh, not really rational. We're trying to say that uh, they might be able to have everyone still at work but on six hour shifts instead of 11.4 hour shifts so basically halving your work days. Well firstly the EBA doesn't allow them to do that and secondly, it would just be silly because uh, with the government announcing a whole lot of uh, payments that you could be entitled to, if you're getting six hours of pay a day, you wouldn't be uh, eligible for any of those payments. So I had a chat with Tambo this morning before he's gone in with management and said, look, the preference for Virgin is to have the guys off work for quite, quite a while. So it might be a month on, a month off. If, if that's possible, or it might be a month on and two months off, but you're better off having it in big blocks because if you have it in big blocks, then you're not going into Centrelink every six hours and saying, yeah, I was employed for six hours, but I've been stood down for six hours. It's better off to manage it by taking a long bit of leave if you've got leave. If you haven't got leave, then you can access the Centrelink payments uh, and, uh, and you don't want to have to be going in and out of Centrelink each week. Uh, so, um, Virgin, yes, yeah, so they're in there talking to them now. Uh, Jetstar, uh, Jetstar, uh, probably in a very similar boat to Qantas there, um, got uh, a large number of uh, people that they're targeting to be stood down, and again, they're not engaging or considering anything that we have to say. I, I mean, I think they've got the same IR people working behind the scenes. Um, for both uh, Qantas and Jetstar, we are either this afternoon or tomorrow morning going to lodge an application with the Fair Work Commission to have the stand downs completely knocked on the head. I'll put up a post about if you guys can identify any useful work. We've got plenty of submissions from um, from our Qantas members. Uh, we've got, got some good, good stuff there from Woodsy, uh, our 
our uh, uh, former rep from Sydney at Jetstar. Any more Jetstar information that you guys can identify as work that could potentially be done is something that we will need to be presenting to the Fair Work Commission in support of our arguments that, hey, there is useful work, we can do work, here's some work here, but we need to know what the work is. So uh, that case could uh, could be brought on within a few days. It may even be brought on within 24 hours. So um, if guys just continue to add to that thread and we're, we're, we can add all those things as potential ideas on what work could be done for Fair Work Commission case. Uh, so the other problem that we've got with Jetstar is um, that, uh, and I, don't know because there's so much going on it's hard to know uh, the ins and outs of everything but it appears that they're trying to change rosters so that uh, you are uh, like, like for example um, say they want to start on the 1st of April is the stand down date I don't, I don't know exactly what the stand down date is at uh, Jetstar it might vary right you stood down from the 1st of April they're saying you have to take leave from the 1st of April well some guys were on their rostered days off for three or four days after the 1st of April they're telling them to take leave on days that they were already rostered off so we've got another dispute going with Jetstar in relation to that um, so uh, yeah that's about it for Jetstar we've got Rex Rex are shutting down all services uh, uh, apart from some flying in Queensland so anyone from Rex who may be watching uh, Noel Spears will be uh, handling the, the Rex portion of any, any stand downs. We've got the Heston Aviation uh, issue where we've already been into the Fair Work Commission. Heston, were just they just said, right, everyone's going home and you can't access your leave. So we had to go to the Fair Work Commission on that. There was a hearing a couple of days ago. Heston were ordered to uh, rethink their policy and strategy and the Heston blokes have now got the ability to take some leave. Uh, there's a bit happening on with, with some other smaller operators as well, and I, I can't I, I can't mention them all here. There's Core Core that provide uh, labour hire for Jetstar. They've all been stood down, and we're facing similar issues there. But uh, alrighty, uh, um, uh, that's just a little bit of uh, around the grounds. Uh, and if you could please don't don't ask your questions live yet, because I've got the questions that were posted uh, yesterday and last night. Uh, I'm going to run through those questions first, then um, uh, then I'll have a look at any questions that come up live. So if you hold off your questions and until then, and uh, and then finally when this wraps up, because because Rod and I are now in different locations, we can't sit together and do a joint Facebook live. Uh, Rod Wise, our president, is going to do another one straight on the back of this to talk about a different style of issues. So being being um, essentially the head of our industrial relations team, I'm going to answer all the technical industrial relations questions. Rod's going to answer all the OHS type issues and the welfare issues because uh, uh, we've got to make sure we all look after ourselves and Rod's got a bit more compassion than me. I'm a bit more a bit more technical. Alrighty, uh, so just going on to these questions that I, I have, uh, and the questions have been split between Rod and I. Most of the questions were technical, so I'm going to be ha handling most, most of them. Uh, David Logan, uh, what is the matrix that is used for stand down selections at Qantas that Qantas says makes this process transparent? I have asked my manager to show us the matrix, but declines. Uh, it was explained that someone may be waiting to pick up a roster, but will never get one due to the matrix. Not fair on the person waiting, he should be informed up front. Uh, exactly. So, um, whereas at Jetstar they're using some sort of a alphabetical system to work out who's going to get work, Qantas are using some matrix that they will not show us. Uh, we discussed this on Saturday. We had a big blue with them when we met with them, I think, on Friday, and we said we want to be involved. And, and as we said, it's our responsibility to make sure that these decisions are handed out fairly, whether some of our members would like our involvement or not. Um, we had a big blue with them and then Chris Snook called uh, Rod Wise um, later that night and said actually yeah we will have the union involved. Uh, we've, since approached, we've since approached them and they won't let us have any involvement in their matrix whatsoever. They are just designing it to pick and choose their mates and uh, probably stand down all the ALAA union officials firstly and then others that, uh, that uh, they don't like particularly um, guys who like find lots of things wrong with planes, they wouldn't want them, uh, but they would like the guys who just sit in the smoko room and just uh, certify for work of AMEs without uh, looking at that work. So 
Um, yeah, they're hiding the metrics. They're not going to tell anyone how they're doing it, and they're going to dish out jobs for their mates. But remember, our bigger picture target here is to identify useful work and have their entire stand down thing knocked off. Don't know how we're going to go on the courts with this. Courts, um, courts uh, don't generally side with unions, but we've got some very good case law that says that um, that says that uh, they must exhaust useful work first. Uh, Andrew Travers. Um, from what Ryan Brandt told us yesterday, Arvo, if you had any leave in April, you're automatically qualified for stand down for the month of April at least. Uh, I'm not really sure what that's about. I, I think that might be a question in relation to the manager in Sydney uh, who is going to give a priority to stand down to those who have leave that they can take. I would find it very, very surprising if Ryan Brandt, Mark Wade and those took any notice of who had the high leave balances and tried to get them to take leave first. I don't think they'd do that because uh, they don't really seem to care for one little bit about workers. And then Stephen Hilton, Andrew Tra to Andrew Travers, you cannot be serious. I have one day off, so I'm not sure. He might be a guy who's got one day of leave to take off and they've picked him for stand down, which is the kind of thing that I would expect. Uh, Don Banasevic, uh, the, uh, one of the uh, guys who's changed his profile picture to the Qantas 100 logo. And uh, I know you guys may all have different feelings about this, but um, I, I don't like seeing people change their logo to the Qantas 100 party label at a time where they're trying to do everything to screw workers over. Uh, um, of course, we want to look after the, the airline, but... Uh, I would not be providing them any free promotion at this time. If you want to change your profile pictures, change it to an ALAA one, or one for the volunteer or the workers who are in hospitals trying to save lives, uh, not uh, self-promotion for a greedy greedy airline that's trying to trying to rip off workers. Anyway, sorry, Dom, your uh, question. Steve, will there be a roster change during the stand-down period? And my apologies for the... For the non-Qantas people, a lot of these questions that were posted last night are Qantas, but you can take from what I have to say about that and apply it to your situation. So Dom's from from Sydney uh, A380 section, and uh, uh, and questions about roster changes in uh, Sim or Sam or whatever it's called today. Um, there are discussions going on as we speak about roster changes in in Sam. Uh, we were approached yesterday by Ryan Brandt and Mark Wade and asked if we would consider moving everyone over to the DMM's roster. Roster they've been trying to get for years. We said, well, well, initially we said, well, no. And they said, well, we're gonna put everyone onto the eight hour roster then, which is a nice little threat that they made, but uh, I'm sure you'll hear it directly from their mouths. Uh, so um, uh, in the end, there was another hookup yesterday where we said, all right, it should go to our members if the, we'll go through the normal process if you want to if you want to consider a roster change uh, put it to us in writing uh, put it into an agreement and then we'll organize a vote of our members to see if they want to go uh, to the DMM roster and uh, any any ballots that we would have about the potentially moving to a slightly different roster because it's not too much different uh, it would um, be time limited in the question that we asked in the ballot so it might be uh, for the period of six months, we permit Qantas to use uh, the DMM roster. So uh, let's just um, see what they come back with us today about that. Apparently, they're going to try and be uh, whacking it into a roster agreement so we know what we're voting on. Um, and again, Ryan Kelly says, is the ALA going to oppose any suggested changes to rosters for the people working during the stand-down period? i.e. I'm hearing that Sim will be moving to the DMM roster. So yeah, that's just what I'm talking about. Will we oppose it? No, it would be up to you guys. If you want to move to it, you move to it, you vote yes. You don't want to move to it, you vote no. So uh, you guys will have a say in that. If they tried to force you to the roster, they'd be a breach of the EBA. Um, right on. Um, Stato, Paul Stadden from the training school. Curious to know if tech salaried staff have been mentioned throughout the stand down discussion with QF and Rochelle Simpson, I'd like to know about TSS as well. Um, uh, again, to be honest, I, can't, I cannot possibly cover personally everything. Um, Noel Spears is looking after the TSS along with Glenn Souther. I believe when it comes to stand downs and all the little bits and pieces that relate to TSS, they're about a week or two behind the Qantas Lamy group. So 
uh, there's a little bit of a lag there and anything that we learn from court hearings that we have uh, for the Lamies, uh, Jetstar and Qantas will apply uh, to TSS people as well. So very, very important for you guys to start identifying any useful work uh, that could be done during the period while the aircraft are on the ground. And it was uh, very good to hear from uh, Hobbo Martin Hobson, um, our retired retired instructor from uh, a few years back, uh, explain um, one of the hurdles that we would overcome when it come to uh, saying, hey, look, uh, we can continue to do type courses. And Hobbo said, hey, Steve, the uh, CASA, CASA require a 1.5 metre separation between people for exams, and that's how the seats are set up. So. Uh, on those grounds, we could continue with uh, type training. So thanks for that, Hobbo. Um, Brendan Lackey, when the state or federal government puts everyone into lockdown, what happens to the stand down? The ones not stood down will be at home and the ones at home will no longer be stood down, but rather at home by direction of the government. Please explain how that would work. Um, well, obviously we're in very uh, trying times and no one knows what's going to happen from one day to the next. Um, I wouldn't be taking my advice from Donald Trump at the moment. Donald Trump that seems to think that this will all be over by Easter and it's more important for people to get back out. I, I really don't think that's going to happen. So what's going to happen if the Australian government comes out and says nobody can leave their homes, uh, aircraft... Uh, and uh, what needs to take place on them is no longer essential. Uh, if, if they were to do that, well, look, everyone would just be at home and there would be nothing for us to do about it and we would lose our argument about how we could be usefully employed because basically it would be illegal for anyone to go to work. So anyone who's lucky enough to be rostered um, over the first few weeks of this may have work and others when it comes to be their turn to be rostered back with the cycling that they're sort of loosely trying to apply, it will be a bad luck situation and there won't be much we can do about it. But again, all of that's unknown and dependent on how bad this virus get, gets. Uh, Joppo, Steve, I hear on the grapevine that once stood down, you no longer work a shift pattern. So revert to Monday to Friday work week. No weekends, no public holidays, no ship penalties as such. Is this the case? If you're stood down without pay, you are not employed at all. So yes, there is no ship pattern uh, involved. But if you are trying to take a period of leave whilst uh, they are telling you that you would be stood down and if that leave gets approved, which they say they will at the moment, you would remain on your normal roster. So any penalties that are applied to the different forms of leave uh, would still apply. Uh, Glenn Dixon, why can't we finish the Wi-Fi project? You would imagine that is, it is the perfect time. And yeah, I think I've seen somewhere that three aircraft are still require the Wi-Fi to be put onto, onto them. And uh, I, I would, that, that will certainly get a mention in, uh, in a court case if uh, we get before a judge. Uh, Wi-Fi is one thing that we would uh, say that can be done and it should be done before everyone's um, locked, locked down. Uh, Pat Bagnett, um, so it uh, looks like a Jetstar question here. Uh, if we have been stood down, can the company stand us back up for a day to cover someone on shift who has gone sick, then stand us back down again? How would that work for people who opted for the rock and roll option or for others that had picked up other short term contract work? Um, well, I, I don't know what the rock and the rock and roll option really refers to, but I, I think everyone understands that question. Yep, they stand you down for a day, stand you down for a month, but they say, oh, we need you tomorrow because someone's called in sick. Well, the airline should not be rostering to the point that they are on the bread line and can't continue to manage their business if someone calls in sick. Normally, when a roster is built at any airline, not only for the purposes of CASA, but also for uh, the management of their own business, they must put in a buffer of about 25% uh, and, and plan to have 25% more people there than they actually need to take into account for sick leave. We don't think it would be right um, for them to uh, go down to the bare minimum and send everyone home on pay and effectively have you on standby because if you're effectively on standby, you can't apply for a job and seek employment elsewhere. That is not what the purpose of this section is. the Act is for. The purpose of this section 
of the Act, and thank you, Sam, uh, Rock and Roll, the doll. Uh, the purpose of this section of the Act um, is when they have absolutely no need for you to free you up to apply for another, another job elsewhere and seek employment there. And I, I think if we end up in the Commission and they're going to be running some argument that, yeah, you know, we're going to be able to call people back at any time, it may look bad in the eyes of the commission, Commissioner, but on the other hand, they may be legally allowed to do it, however disgusting the, the practice is. Um, alrighty, Laurie Jones, Steve, during leave without pay, i.e. all types exhausted, do super and medical cover still get paid as we are still employed? I may not catch the YouTube, so answer here would be appreciated. My, my apologies, I didn't have time to answer everything in writing last night. Uh, and, uh, and what I like to see, it's from a member who, who works for Cathay, so not a Qantas uh, question. Uh, if you have exhausted your leave and you are on stand down and you're having no pay, you're 100% correct, Laurie, you are still employed. Everything still accrues uh, except uh, the super question accrues in a way that you probably wouldn't like to hear. Um, so super isn't paid as a dollar amount each week or fortnight or month. The super is paid as a percentage of your salary. So if your super is 10% of your salary and your salary is nothing, yes, super continues, you'll get 10% of your salary, which is nothing. So you'll get nothing for it. Uh, medical cover, I'm not familiar exactly with the medical cover arrangements that Cathay have, but that's a condition of employment that should continue if you are no longer employed. So things like that will continue. So will your leave of accruals. You continue to accrue leave and long service leave through the period you stood down because you're, um, because you're still employed. Uh, Peter Thompson, what shift penalty will be paid on annuals, RDOs, DILs, and used for stand down? So um, uh, I'm assuming this is a Qantas question because you've used the terms DILs, which is a Qantas, uh, Qantas specific thing. Uh, the shift penalties that will be paid on annual leave will be the normal shift penalty uh, for the normal roster that you were on. Uh, the shift penalty for RDOs and DILs will be your normal shift penalty. Be careful here, guys, that they don't suck you into pay, having your DILs paid out or don't get sucked into applying for annual leave first knowing that there's a clause in the EBA that says days in lieu will automatically be paid out when you take annual leave. Uh, there's going to be a lot of specifics about uh, how to make most out of your leave and it will differ from company to company, um, but I can, I can tell you some general principles that you should adopt when trying to manage your own particular circumstances. So um, apply for your deals first. I can't, I can't cash them out. You'll get paid your ship penalties on those deals that you take rather than getting them paid out a single time. Use your annual leave after that. Uh, as for stand down, what shift penalty do you get paid on stand down where you don't get any any uh, shift penalty on zero pay? So um, long service leave, you'd lose your shift penalties. Duncan Parrott, a rep from Perth, Qantas again. I've got a question from tomorrow's live feed that relates to roster changes. My understanding that is that Per our EA, the company is required to give us seven days notice of a roster change unless by mutual agreement. The only shift they can revert to without any agreement is an eight hour shift pattern. The guys that have been stood down from midnight Sunday should still be entitled to shift penalties on their annual leave deals 20th days until the company formally notifies the employee group still working in the particular area of the new roster pattern, and then for a window of seven days after that noti notification. Uh, so that, that, that's correct in the sense that they must give you seven days notification of any, any roster change. And a, a roster change can be done by mutual agreement. That is, we have a vote and say, yep, uh, more than half the guys are willing to go to a particular pattern. Uh, or they can just put you to an eight hour roster without, without a vote, but they must give you seven days notice. So. Um, there will be a lag behind any uh, any way they can rip you off by um, any way they can rip you off and Stuart that question that you've just posted about flexible long service leave I might have a little bit of a chat about that but uh, Rod Wise is going to tackle that in a second of these um, 
Uh, so yeah, a bit of a lag behind uh, the shift penalties are going to try and rip you off. Um, and I think further to that, Duncan had something else about his hearing in some sections that they're already ordering people onto eight-hour rosters. I don't know of any specific section where that's that's uh, been locked in yet or they've actually done it, but I'm sure they're looking at it. Uh, Jai Redman has uh, a number of questions. I'll try and, try and answer each of them individually. Uh, if financially able, would you be better off not burning the leave during this period? Uh, that question um, is complicated if you want to claim social security, social security benefits. Uh, social security, one question that is on everyone's lips, whatever, whatever group they're in is, if you've got a shitload of accrued leave and you've been stood down, can you apply for um, the government assistance? And I don't know exactly the answer to this, but what, what I'm hearing as rumour, if nothing else, is you can have big leave balances and still apply for the government assistance uh, and they pay it to you. Uh, but then again, that might be reversed or some new information may come to light. So then back to the question, would you be better off burning, burning leave during this period? Well, uh, uh, that depends on anyone's individual circumstances. But um, one thing that I can give everyone as some general advice is um, do not accept any of these options of long service leave or annual leave at half pay. If you, if you go for one of these half pay options, you may stretch out the amount of time that it takes for them to give you your money, uh, but you also stretch out the time that it takes before you're eligible for any social security payments. So for example, um, if you have one month worth of annual leave and you say, hey, can I have the one month annual leave at half pay so that it lasts for two months, that means you can't apply for uh, government assistance until a two month point. You're better off taking all of the money in full pay up front for a month, uh, saving some of that money so you've got money for the second month, but you would also be eligible for government assistance. But again, individual circumstances may vary. Uh, next he asks, they use the term stood down when not using your leave, then not stood down when you are on leave. That's correct. Are they more likely to make a position redundant down the track to those who are stood down opposed to not stood down ACA on leave? Uh, well, whether you are stood down or not stood down, you're on leave or you're still working, you are all still employees and the conditions of the enterprise agreement apply. So if there is, um, if there is consideration for any redundancies, it won't be CR, it will be the normal process of calling for volunteers first and then, uh, and then having consultation. So we have certainly nowhere near a point where people are going to be forced into redundancies and preference given to those who are stood down over those who are taking leave. That won't apply. Will A380 Acting Senior and any other payments be applicable when using your leave? Yes, you'll still get all your allowances while you're on leave. Will leave continue to accrue when you are not using using your leave? We believe that you, if you're on stand down, uh, your leave will still be accruing because you're still an employee. The only thing they don't do is pay you. Do days and lose continue to rack up if you are using, not using your leave? Uh, we say yes, uh, and it, it makes sense because your days in lieu um, in all sections, um, sorry, apologies, except for heavy maintenance, uh, done on uh, leave, on on pay averaging principles, which is, um, is uh, they don't accrue on um, specific days as they did in the days before we were on on wage averaging. It's now spread across a large length of time and the lengths of time for your roster to cycle completely could be anything up to seven years. So um, your deal should still accrue. They, uh, they try and rip us off there, uh, which wouldn't surprise me. Um, well, uh, it might make me a bit angry, uh, but I probably couldn't be any more angrier than I am at the moment. If a redundancy round was offered in 12 months, how would not working for up to nine months affect 
the payout figure. And that question's very good. It, uh, it relates, uh, I, uh, I, from what I can take from the question, primarily to super. And it depends on what super fund you're in. Uh, and, um, uh, and from memory, um, those, there's two types of defined benefit scheme. Uh, one takes your highest pay for five, your best five of the previous seven years. Uh, the, so the, the year would be excluded, so you'd still get your best five years, and this one would be excluded. Um, I think the other one's similar, but I would really have to look through all the trustees on all, all the super funds to know uh, exactly how to answer that. I don't think it'll affect payout figures very much. Defined benefit schemes, which is where, sorry, um, your accumulation funds where money just goes into account. Well, it just depends on how the stock, how much the stock market crashes. Uh, but as for the, the other part of your redundancy payment, which is up to, I think, 96 weeks of, of your pay, uh, for uh, based on your years of service, I don't know for five weeks for each year, um, that won't be affected because it goes off a figure that's in the enterprise agreement. Right, so that's off Jai's questions. Um, I'm going to mumbles. Mark Moore uh, says, if stood down and you took leave on a Sunday, would it be paid as the shift you took off rather than the average since you are on stand down? Um, I can't answer that one specifically at the moment. That makes uh, that that's a very very technical question where you would have to go and have a look at the uh, wage, wage averaging agreements themselves as they apply to each department, and uh, uh, and also the EBA. But we we know we know that Qantas will attempt to use this to their advantage. Uh, it's interesting that if you take a sickie on a Sunday, they look at the exact penalty for that day and take 100% of your salary away. Um, I dare say they will try and give you your wage averaging if you have leave on a Sunday, as opposed to uh, double dollars for the, the individual day. Uh, Kez Stevens, in my letter it gives a specific time the stand down commences, but no specific time it ends. Is there legal ramification there? And I think Kev had, Kev Baldacino had replied, or someone had replied that, that that's probably a mistake, and I think it might be. Uh, I don't know, Kev, why you have no time uh, or date that you return to work. And uh, bear in mind, there's probably a thousand letters that we now have access to, I've seen, and there's so many different things that have been put uh, in the letters and Qantas haven't seemed to have applied anything consistently. Uh, Brad Cox, one of our executive members, works at uh, SIT. Uh, let's say, for example, the virus lasts four months. Can the Fair Work Act Qantas is using continue beyond that point or is it revoked and they won't be able to continually have people on stand down? Uh, the provisions of the Fair Work Act aren't linked to the virus, virus itself. They're linked to circumstances which are beyond an employer's control and the effects of the virus may last a lot longer than the virus itself. So if it lasted four months and the Prime Minister says, all right, everyone, back to work, uh, there still may be an argument that there's not as much useful work as there was three months ago uh, for employees at any given company so the traffic might come back a little bit slower and when Rod and I met with uh, Vanessa Hudson the Qantas CFO they seemed that this is about three or four weeks ago they seem to be in some sort of a la la land where they're thinking oh yeah you know when SARS happened uh, everyone come back to traveling more than more than ever our bookings went through the roof and that's because SARS lasted for but a few weeks and bugger all people got it and people just didn't travel for, I don't know, a month or two, and a lot of people had saved some money to, um, to go on holidays. I, I don't think too many people are going to be saving money over the four potential months that we could be stood down for. So, Coxie, the work might come back slowly. Um, and uh, just uh, the, the question, look, I, I'm just going to talk about this a little bit, uh, and um, Rod, Rod will explain to you what we've, we've done and how we're going to handle it, but... Uh, um, this morning, my 
emails, uh, my, my chats on WhatsApp with various work groups was filled up with some concept that uh, uh, New South Wales have changed legislation and you can now apply for shorter terms of long service leave, can we apply for one day leave? Uh, well, the New South Wales government is conservative and uh, they put an out clause there for employers uh, and the out clause was it's got to be mutually agreeable between the employer and the employee. Uh, so uh, the airline are just going to say no, we, we're going to write to them uh, and uh, sorry Rod, uh, I'm sure he's watching, he'll talk about this further. They're going to say no because of the out clause um, and uh, some of our executive members and those members on the feed are saying oh you know we can write letters and we can try, well it'll be like banging our heads up against the wall when we have a much bigger picture which is we want to get the entire stand down thing knocked off by a courtroom. Um, uh, asking them a question that they're just going to say no to is, is just consuming the time of our members. We're going to ask it, we're going to write to them, but uh, they're just going to say no. Um, uh, all right, so maybe I'll try and get to some of these, um, these live questions that have come through before I let Rod take over. Uh, and um, I'll just go back a little bit. Um, I'll go back to question mark more. They still pay super whilst on any leave too, not stand down. Yeah, that's because super is part of your wage and they have to pay 10% of your wage into super. When you're stood down without pay, 10% of zero wage is zero. Uh, Anthony Satmari, uh, what do we do if we are asked for night shifts only to make up numbers? Um, uh, I, I don't know what section exactly we're talking about, but effectively, if they're asking for you to work only night shift, well, you should have your night shift uh, shift penalty increased. Well, it doesn't matter whether you're a virgin or Qantas, both of, both of them have uh, additional payments for anyone working permanent night shift. Uh, what we would have to do is uh, have any roster changes such as that sent through so that we could assess them and see if you're entitled to any more payments. Uh, Chris Burley, some super divisions in Qantas are uh, best three consecutive years of the last five years. So, yeah, so there's so many different super divisions and uh, of course I'm talking to people from different companies as well. Um, super will affect people in different ways. Uh, Hans, Hans our rep, DMM rep from Brisbane Terminal at Qantas. Uh, QF, sorry, just online Q&A that came with my stand down appears only to allow annual leave and long service leave to be taken whilst on stand down. Appears deals and 20th days can only be asked to be paid out, not taken. Sorry if this has been answered. Um, uh, no, it hasn't been answered, mate. Uh, uh, yeah, they're sending out a thing saying that you can only take annual leave and long service leave. That is not what they've told us or provided us in information. They've said that people will be able to take deals and will be able to take RDOs. So, um, if their Q&A thing says something different, they've told us that you can take it. Uh, and I'm sorry, I just had a bit of a disconnect there. Uh, uh, said poor connection. Um, can you guys still hear me? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just checking that I'm still live. If someone could just, uh, I'm getting some thumbs up. Yeah, okay, all right, so I'm back on. Um, all right, uh, so hopefully I didn't cut off before I answered all of Hans's question, but I get it, better get some of, some, some of the others. Uh, Peter Judd, uh, who uh, I would hope is not in Bali now, as he was last time I saw him. Uh, do you lose actual shift penalties plus your shift, or is it just wage average when on stand down? There can be a big difference. Yes, there can be, mate. And... Uh, and I would think initially the answer to that question would be you lose your average shift penalties. Uh, and that's how, uh, how the simplest way to apply it would be. But having said that, I'm sure someone from Qantas is probably watching this and are probably trying to crunch the numbers to work out which one will rip the workers off more and give them more money for next year's bonuses. Anthony Ferugia, Andrew David stating this, stated this morning that the reason they are not bringing maintenance forward is to conserve cash on this morning's town hall when he was asked the question. Uh, well, that's, that's a really key point that uh, we're going to be raising in our Fair Work Commission hearing. They cannot stand down to save money. 
They can only stand down if there's no work. That's what the provision of the Act is. Uh, having said that, though, uh, in the case law, the, the cases that have previously been run, a decision by a commissioner does give some weight to the financial position of the company, but we're very, very mindful of that. Uh, and, um, and the financial of the position of the company is that they had $1.9 billion in cash uh, before this all commenced, and they've just got another billion dollars yesterday from uh, from putting in some sort of arrangements to lease out, lease back their 787. So they've got plenty of cash, so their financial position's nice dire. But if uh, if that's what Andrew Davies said at the town hall meeting, um, that's really good news, uh, and uh, we'll chase that one up when this finishes. In fact, I'm, I'm a little bit excited about it. Uh, Johnny Bursell, rep from Sydney Domestic, in a reduced crew structure, will the supervisor structure be maintained, as in, will we keep a DMM position at SDO? Well, this is where you guys, um, you guys need to be really smart about things. And, and, and um, a, a, as a union, we tell guys, we tell guys to just follow the rules strictly and work to rule, uh, we often get ignored, um, uh, guys, and shit, even I did it when I was a lamey, you know, sometimes you'd run to a plane because you didn't want to get a delay. Well, guys, don't do that stuff. We've got to really adhere to the strict union guidelines at the moment. So, John, back to your question, are they going to get rid of the supervisor? If they get rid of the supervisor in any section and leave you with no supervision, and this does not matter where you work, when you get to work, Sit in a chair. Sit in a chair and wait. Wait until someone who is in the supervisor position comes and assigns you your work. Don't, don't get in there and say, oh, I've got no supervisor, all right, well, we better organise ourselves to go and arrive aircraft. Don't answer radio calls. Don't do anything until you've got a supervisor there. Your supervisor's also there for your man down procedure in case someone gets injured. Survival safety link. Uh, to you and emergency services if someone falls down on the tarmac. Don't work if there's no supervisor, guys, and I think they may be talking about some stuff like that. Um, Jeff Honza again, a supervisor. I don't want you cutting corners either, Jeffrey. Uh, QF Brisbane LMO for Lamies. Are all staff at ports going to have the stand down shared around or will the group that received Letters yesterday keep having their stand down extended. We believe it's going to be shared around, and um, and that's what they're telling us at the moment. Uh, well, it's what they're telling us. So whether you believe it or not, uh, but just your your question has prompted me to a similar type of question uh, that's coming out of Virgin that extends from this model. And with Virgin, a lot of their smaller ports are just closing completely. They're not flying there anymore, and. The question's been put by the Virgin guys who have come from the smaller ports, can they transfer us to one of the bigger ports so that we can take our share of the work that's going to be uh, still available in Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne? Um, and uh, sorry, I've just got a message saying this is frozen from Steve Ray in our office. Can anyone hear me again? Just need uh, some thumbs up or a yes. Uh, Getting some thumbs up there now, and I'll sort of just start um, what I was talking about with Virgin and outports. Uh, and if it freezes from time to time, sorry, I think there's a lot of people trying to do video conferencing at the moment. Um, with uh, outports at Virgin, that they, they, they won't fly there, and everyone at the airport will be stood down. They will not be sending you to one of the bigger ports. And the reason for that is because they don't want people isolated from their family uh, and um, and there's a very, very limited work in some of the, some of the bigger ports anyway. So um, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry if it's cut out and uh, part of my questions were uh, uh, unanswered, but uh, hopefully it was okay. And I'm just going to scroll back to some of the live questions as they were coming through again. Uh, Greg, I've changed my profile picture to Qantas 100 to give him free ad advertising. Tim's... Uh, Billion doesn't go far these days, you know, especially when you've spent so much buying back shares. Mm. Yeah, so we wrote to 
the Deputy Prime Minister about buying back shares yesterday. It was one of the points in the letter that we shared with uh, APA and uh, uh, other pilot union AFAT. Uh, but more seriously, um, a billion dollars, how far does it go? Qantas have said, Qantas have said that a billion dollars, sorry, they've said that the sal salaries for year are 4.3, or let's just say $4 billion. So $1 billion could provide salaries for three months. Three months may be the expected uh, period of complete shutdown. Uh, so that money could pay for every single Qantas staff member to be able to continue to feed their families. But no, they're trying to, trying to screw everyone for every cent that they can. Um, Andrew Watts, email from Ben Nabe in Melbourne. He has said we can take Z Days deals annuals as well as leave without pay. Uh, so um, so there we go. We have it in writing in Melbourne um, for everyone, that, at least in one port, that you can, can take all of that stuff. And, and I just, I just want to, um, want to uh, say something that uh, may seem a little bit odd. I often criticise Qantas managers and call them a pack of bastards or whatever it may be. Um, but Ben Nave in Melbourne, he's a really good uh, good bloke and an ex lamey who uh, we put up there in there as one of the honourable managers anyway. Uh, Paul Kennedy uh, from uh, Canberra, Virgin Tech. Question for VT Outports. If outports are being serviced in the new shrunk schedule and that outport is stood down, i.e. it is operated as an unmanned port, what happens when the aircraft goes AOG? Are the local lamies going to get a call or are they going to fly in an engineer from a port that is still operating? Well, this is new to me. I didn't... I haven't heard anyway that they're going to maybe shut down some of the smaller ports that still have an occasional flight and declare it an unmanned port. The CASA regulations may allow them to do that. If they do that, I dare say the same provisions would apply for all unmanned ports. And uh, and uh, if anyone from Maintenance Watch in any company is watching, if a plane gets to an unmanned port and it's broken, you don't put it, have a quiet word in the captain's ear and say, oh, just wait until it gets back to Perth. Um, so maintenance watch guys, um, no, none, of this, none of this snag at later stuff uh, at times like these. And uh, Paul Kennedy, do you get called in if you're stood down on no pay to help them out of a pickle? Uh, I would say no, I would say just tell them to get nicked. Um, if they're on a man ports, uh, whether whatever airline it may be, uh, don't go in and help them in their times of need. They should be manning them. Andrew Pridham from Pontus and Darwin seem to be targeting B2 lamies over B1 due to limited flying. Can they dictate trades they keep? Yes. Andrew and all you avionics blokes, you wanted to get paid the higher wages for, uh, for your careers. They're going to target you because you get paid more. Sorry, I'm just taking the piss there because I'm avionics as well. Uh, yeah, uh, the airlines uh, can pick and choose. They can say that there's no work for B2s, there's work for B1s, and uh, they would use the uh, no useful employment argument. So um, really, really shit situation, uh, but they can choose one trade over another legally. Ethically they can't, but uh, they don't have any ethics. Um, Blake Willis. Hi Steve Seymour. I'll try and click this and hopefully I don't cut out. Uh, with regards to a recent statement from Paul Scurra, Paul Scurra is the Virgin CEO, uh, this morning that uh, a thousand staff will be made redundant. Yes, I did see that. I was watching um, the Virgin press conference. Uh, VA Engineering represents only a small number of total employees. Do you see this affecting us down the track? And if so, is there any negotiations that could be made with regards to hours worked and reduction in IE night shift penalties to try and keep a fellow team members in work? Look, we haven't heard about any potential redundancies in engineering at Virgin Tech. Uh, uh, I've received emails from blokes at Virgin Tech saying that they would like to have uh, a package. if. Virgin are going to enact redundancies through this period. The redundancy provisions in your enterprise agreement will apply, which I think in most cases is 16 weeks pay. Um, and whether you're stood down or not, that still applies. You can still get it during a period that you're stood down. Uh, we would be certainly asking for volunteers first, but we haven't heard about any pending 
uh, retrenchments in uh, in uh, that area. And uh, Warwick Martin, I believe heavy maintenance Brisbane will continue. If this is true, would there be opportunities for other staff to progress the checks? on weekends, public holidays and nights when the heavy guys and gals are not working. Uh, there, there should be opportunities for people to do work because they've got a back-to-back -back heavy maintenance program. But uh, what we're being told at the moment, this is not locked, uh, locked in stone, is that even the heavy maintenance are gonna be on a half work schedule, maybe a one week on, one week off. So heavy maintenance guys are looking at being stood down too. Uh, and that being the case, obviously, they're not gonna drag guys from elsewhere. Uh, Punky from uh, Virgin Tech is trying to access my gov during your live feed. Uh, good luck with that. Um, just uh, just from uh, experience, uh, uh, from uh, what I'm hearing from the flight attendants, the first couple of days everyone was lining outside the Centrelink offices. Well, you don't have to do that now. You can do it all online. You can go from the start to the finish and uh, organise it all online. And uh, as of this morning, some of their some of their stuff particularly via their their app you can get straight you can get through straight away so uh, internet access onto their sites might be difficult but if you download the app you can actually uh, have have it done a lot quicker um, uh, uh, Greg Tim's industry-wide question uh, APAP ALAA APAP letter to the deputy PM was great what about sending the letter to state governments and local councils who are providing no assistance to aviation industry? And um, the reason that we wouldn't send such a letter to state governments and councils is because aviation comes under the federal jurisdiction. Uh, state governments do not have, um, have legislation making powers in those areas. So uh, that's, that's the ownership of federal parliament, not state governments. Dan Antaridia, JQ, I am in the situation where the 1st of April is my first stand down day and it coincides with, uh, is my first day of after a block of four. They are asking us to submit leave. I have not submitted leave anything yet and I'm reluctant to. In any case, the leave application system that they have set up isn't working. So example, if I want to take leave at half pay, it's not available. Well, look, I don't know, I, I did touch on this earlier, Dan. Um, I'm recommending at this stage, you guys seriously do not consider any half pay arrangements. You're better off getting it up front. If you want to take it at half pay, put the half of the money aside to last, but you're gonna cut yourself out from government assistance. But the core of your question is more in relation to applying for leave uh, from the 1st of April, the first four days, your first day off, your first four days were days off anyway, and they may be asking you to to blow some leave on days that were your rostered day off. Yep, yep, the Jetstar don't know what they're doing. Uh, Qantas don't, they don't know what they're doing either. Virgin don't know what they're doing. Uh, the difference is Virgin have got two of our guys and they're helping them, so when, when things eventually come out, we're gonna know what it is. Um, uh, I've got, no doubt that there's going to be thousands of people who have problems having the processing of leave approved, paid correctly, and the people who are doing that, be it Jetstar or Qantas, I can tell you now have got a bloody clue what they're doing. Uh, Stato again, Tech Train and QF have heard nothing about Stand Down, has the ALAA. Uh, like I said before, mate, uh, in answer to your, to your posted questions, uh, what we're hearing, it's a week or two off. Um, uh, dot four brake fluid from Honza, I'm not sure. Patrick Hildebrandt, some maintenance watch guys that were doing overtime. Yeah, um, there was some maintenance watch guys doing some overtime a while back. Uh, uh, I think maintenance watch um, are having announcements made in their department that they're not happy about at the moment and they're in the same boat as everyone else and I'm sure some maintenance watch guys are watching as we speak, and they're just trying to roll out things like roster changes for them that is uh, pissing them off. Um, uh, I wouldn't work overtime if I was in maintenance watch, and I hope they don't. And uh, hello to our former former ALAA executive member, Tish Savarese, my old senior. Um, sorry, technical issue. 
Old C, who was on our ALA executive for some time, now retired. Happy now. Yes, Greg, that's a, a fantastic. He's taken down the profile picture and put an ALA one up. <laughs> um, oh, all right, good work. Uh, ben Webb from Jetstar Melbourne. Hi, Steve, I'm pregnant. No, um, sorry, no, uh, Ben's not pregnant. Uh, I'm permanent JQ shift supervisor and have been given stand down notice. Uh, yes, uh, Ben, being a supervisor on one of the four crews in Melbourne, I'm wondering who's going to be supervising your shift when you're not there. And uh, back to something I said earlier, the rest of the few jet sail guys, just sit there if there's no supervisor. Don't go and uh, arrive aircraft. You need to be told by the supervisor which plane to work on. Um, uh, so uh, Bob Tuby, our jet star counsellor, will be raising all these sort of technical issues as he continues to discuss things uh, with uh, jet star management. Uh, Scotty Campbell from uh, Virgin Tech, Call and Gatter. Long, long service leave provisions accrue after seven years in Queensland. You can't use it until 10 years. Will this be relaxed? Can we use long service leave if we haven't reached the 10 year mark? Um, all states are different with their long service leave provisions. Some of them you can access it after five, some are 10, some are seven. Um, Will it be relaxed in Queensland? So I'll take you, I'll take you on, on face value from what you posted there, Scott, as being the Queensland provisions. They accrue after seven years. Mm, um, well, uh, they accrue from the start. They just aren't available till uh, seven years. In Queensland, you can't use it until 10 years. So the difference between the seven and 10 years in Queensland, if it is what I think without having it in front of me, is um, they are accessible at seven years if you leave the company. So you leave the company after eight years, they've still got to pay your accrued uh, long service leave. If you're still employed, you can't take it till 10 years. There may be some people who sit between seven and 10 years are wondering if that can be brought forward. If Queensland legislation says that you cannot do that, um, that means it's prohibited and they wouldn't be able to. Uh, they would have to change the law to allow it. Uh, and um, the Queensland government may or may not do that. They've changed some provisions in uh, New South Wales. Um, I have to just wait and see what happens, mate. So uh, if you're in that boat, I don't think you'd be able to take it. Uh, ben Webb again from Jetstar Melbourne. While other lamies keep on having been upgraded to supervisor for a crew, can they do this? Uh, yeah, yeah, they can do it. <clears throat> Is it fair? Well, I, I think the fairest way, as you being a supervisor would be to allow some people to be upgraded, but only to a point that the amount of stand down you have to take is equal to those who are not supervisors. I'd like to see it shared equally. Uh, understanding how people behave, and I think we're having a good taste of how people behave or misbehave over things like toilet paper. I've got no doubt that some lamies and some of our members are gonna be thinking of themselves I'm fortunate because I'm not in the same situation as you guys, but as much as possible where you have systems that you have a say in, it doesn't matter what company about, the allocation of work, share it around as much as you can, guys. Um, it'll, it'll just be fairer on everyone. And Ben, if that means someone standing up into your position for a little bit, uh, I would approve that. Um, and hopefully you would also. Ah... Uh, Okay, let's continue. Um, Dave Kerr, <laughs> another one with the uh, 100 Qantas, uh, Qantas profile picture. Good work, Dave. Giving them free advertising while they're pilfering money out of your pocket. Has scheduled training been cancelled? Yep, there's a lot of training's been cancelled, mate. Uh, people on tight course have been told the tight course not going to go ahead, but we think that's useful work that they could do. Um, uh, Greg Timms, local councils own many regional aerodromes but are not waiving landing fees. Yeah, look, uh, we've seen that in relation to um, to Rex in particular, that uh, they could waive fees. Uh, there are arrangements that airlines will have to try and come uh, to with, with local councils and also privately owned airports. Um, that's probably too far of a stretch for us to go chasing up when we think that there's some bigger fish that we can catch here. Um, uh, what sort of government assistance are we able to get? Look, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that briefly. Um, so, 
Scott Morrison made some announcements uh, along with Josh Feidenberg, the Federal Treasurer, the other day. Uh, at the moment, mm, the dole is called a new start allowance. And if you get stood down today, tomorrow, you can access a new start allowance. The new start allowance was in, in the vicinity of 470 or 480 dollars a fortnight. Um, uh, 250 a week, 240 a week, it's, uh, it's not much at all. Uh, but the government ministers announced the other day that from the 27th of April, you'll be able to access a coronavirus supplement, which is um, 78, 540 or something a uh, fortnight. And that adds on top of the new start allowance. There are no waiting periods, there are no income tests, you know, no assets tests. So essentially anyone who's on stand down will be able to get the equivalent of about $1,000 a fortnight in government assistance. There's some other little things that get added on top like power supplements and if you've got kids you get family tax benefit A and B and there's, so there's other things that could add to it but if you could think of it as about 500 bucks a week. That's why I'm saying don't take your leave at half pay because you can take it at full pay, stretch it out and take 500 bucks a week. That's what I would be doing. Um, the other key government assistance that they said that you could take would be accessing $10,000 uh, of your super with tax-free this financial year and another 10000 next financial year. Of course, if you want to pull your super out early, um, it will affect your long-term super. Um, if you have to pay your mortgage and you have no other option, you might want to do it and it might help you get through with mortgage payments. Um, just bear in mind, a lot of banks are allowing people to postpone their mortgage payments for three months. So, you know, like just you don't have to pay your mortgage. So paying your mortgage may not may not have to happen. You may need the money to feed your children. You may need it to pay uh, whatever it is you guys have to pay. Um, you'd probably want to try and avoid accessing that super, but that is there if you want to do it. Um, Tony Saradakis, can you get your leave paid out? So zero balance, then access government funds and super. Uh, good question. Uh, I think Qantas would not, or any company would not allow you to get your leave paid out now. I, I just don't think they're gonna say yes to that. And the reason they wouldn't say yes to that is because um, they, um, they would have to process more paperwork for it. Uh, Rod Stevens, so quite some cans. Uh, Steve, we have a manager and a MASC quality, quality and safety. Both are lamies. Can they certify while guys stood down cans? Uh, I would think if they tried, we would say that, hey, the bloke has been stood down, but there's some useful work for them to do. They're getting a manager to do it instead. I think that would look really bad in the eyes of the Fair Work Commission. So, Rod, just keep note of any anything like that that's pending, and it may roll into some sort of a court case that we're running. Um, uh, uh, Jenny Vichichovic, uh <laughs> Uh, Tenny used to work in mods in uh, in Sydney about 50 years ago when I did. Um, he's taken the piss out of my green cordial. So thanks for raising the important issues, Denny. And stop voting for the Liberal Party. We need we need good governments in that are going to look after workers, mate. Um, Chris Gruniger, it would be handy, especially by the time of April 27, rolls, rolls around for no assets test yet. The assets test, I think, look, check the fine print on it. I think that goes on April 27. Doesn't matter how much your house is worth um, or how much um, other forms of income you have. Uh, Brad Cox, if on stand down over Easter, will you owe them money, i.e. accruals? Um, 
Look, it depends on what roster you're on. You're on the SIT roster. Heavy maintenance might be different. Virgin might be different. Uh, this this stand-down provision in the Act actually says that um, if you're stood down over a public holiday, they had to re-credit you the day for the public holiday. So the common sense thing for uh, the airline to do would just be to roll that up in your average salaries, i.e. still give you days in lieu. Um, uh, uh, on stand down, well, you owe them money. You won't owe them money, um, uh, but, uh, but they should still give you your accrued leave over that period. Um, uh, Rick Wales, number 29 of Qantas Propaganda Question and Answer says, if you take leave during a stand down period, you are not stood down, correct? Is that a loophole to get annual credited back and take sick leave if you fall sick when taking annual leave during the stand down period? Um, a loophole for the company? Um, I don't know. Or, um, if you take, if you get a stand down letter, guys, uh, and this, this is Qantas, this is specifically the Qantas EDA. If you get a stand down letter and they say you're stood down for a month, you can take annual leave. So you apply for a, a month's annual leave and they approve your month's annual leave as I said they were doing. Then you fall sick, get a certificate that you're sick for the month, then Qantas have to recredit you with the annual leave. So you could end up one month down the track with the same leave balance and continually getting paid. So there's a trick for uh, young players. Uh, Jeff Hunzer, it appears a senior lamey will carry out my DMM duties whilst I'm on stand down. Same, same as Ben Webb's answer then, mate. Um, uh, the senior lamey must be stood up to DMM because they're, if they're doing your, your tasks, but anyone in a higher supervisory position has to be replaced so that those tasks are still undertaken. Uh, Rod Stevens again from Cairns. Three of our lameys are non-union members. I would expect stand out equal. I would too. Uh, Steve Fatoulis, if you're given stand down notice over a period that you had leave, can you stand down notice over a period that you had leave, can you cancel that leave and go to unpaid? Yeah, I think you'll be able to do that. Uh, Chris Brown, hey Steve, our ship manager just rang to see how I was doing. <laughs> That's nice. Um, I, you, you actually said that before I read it. I asked him if the next rotation of guys if there is one, would be taken from guys who are now stood down. He said that in Perth that would be the case as long as licence coverage permits. That That's fair. Um, and maybe you've got a good manager in Perth. I'm not sure who your manager is these days. Darren Colombo, I'm a supervisor and, uh, and happy to share the pain equally. Uh, thanks, Darren, and uh, congratulations on your recent promotion to supervisor. I think it was quite recent. Uh, Shane Colbert. When you are stood down, will ALAA fees be dropped? Yes. Um, uh, but I just want to talk about that a little bit, guys, because obviously we're still working and uh, probably uh, in a period, our busiest period, period ever. Um, we received one yesterday, uh, can I have my fees dropped? And um, I, I, don't, I don't know who it was or what the circumstances were, but please, if you're stood down and you're taking annual leave, don't clog our system up expecting us to uh, refund fees whilst you're on annual leave. You shouldn't be refunded over an annual leave period. It's only, only when you are completely exhausted of all of your leave and getting paid nothing, then send your letter to us and then absolutely you, you shouldn't have to pay fees then. Uh, you're not getting paid, you don't, you don't pay fees with us. Uh, we we figure that this whole uh, episode could cost the ALAA up to a million dollars. If every one of our members was stood down for six months, it's gonna cost us a million dollars to keep operating. We've got about three million in the bank, so um, uh, please don't see it as an opportunity to save 20 bucks a week while you're, can, while you're still sneakily taking annual leave. Just be fair and reasonable with it if you, if you don't mind. Um, uh, Jeff Honza, he's asking a lot of questions, Jeffrey. Uh, totally agree, Steve, the stand down needs to be shared. Okay, all right, so that's... Uh... Uh, Pat Hildebrand, something about 
500 bucks a week if your partner earns more than that, you may not get access. Um, Steve Ray from our office, he's our technical officer and uh, executive member. How does the liquid assets test work if you are trying to access government assistance? Look, all I've read about the liquid assets test, that the liquid asset, assets test is how much money you've got in the bank. Uh, that, that oh, I'm hearing that's waived from the 27th of April. So no liquid assets test from the 27th of April. Um, uh, and now I think I'm just getting, I'm not getting, oh no, I've got another series of questions here. Um, partners earning over 500, you still can't claim this payment. That might be the case. Um, kind of say if, if sick on annual leave during stand down, you would be considered to be on stand down and get no pay. I'd like to see them. Uh, I'd like to see them avoid uh, their obligations under the enterprise agreement. If you're sick on annual leave when they've given you a stand down letter, you are still an employee and you are still entitled to the conditions under the EDA, which is repayment of the annual leave. Uh, Ricky, Ricky, recently, recently, not so recently retired. Any info for retirees, Steve? Uh, yeah, and t Tish is online as well, uh, Rick. So uh, our super is dropping like crazy or making nothing if moved to cash. We have no way of making that money up after this is all over. Yeah, it's really um, a really bad time to have money tied to tied to shares. The share market is ju has just completely crashed now. Uh, Rick, I'm assuming, I, although I won't know this for sure, that your money may still be in a Qantas super account of some sort. Um, I know that the stock markets crashed by about 40 or 40% 40 maybe, uh, but um, the Qantas share funds are holding up reasonably reasonably well, um, and, uh, and you may not have lost as much. And uh, on that note, um, I've just been uh, ordered by the federal president to stop talking because he wants to take over, and uh, and that's probably fair enough too, and a good time for me to me to uh, shut down and let Rod have a bit of a chat because these retirees welfare type questions are probably more in uh, in Rod's sphere. So thank you guys for listening to part one, and I'll Rod will probably uh, because. Um, um, because he's not avionics, he'll probably take a while to work out how to do it. So there might be a five minute intermission and he'll be back to answer further questions. So thanks guys.